Hello there, I'm meteorologist Mackenzie Bard, and it's kind of been a wild day here in the weather world. Of course, we've all had eyes on Hurricane Ian, where it made landfall in southwest Florida earlier this afternoon, and we're starting to get some of the pictures and the images out of there. And it is honestly so heartbreaking to see the devastation and, and you know the further impact that they are going to see from that. So we've been following that all day long and we also have an update on our forecast and we are looking at uh, a positive trend here as we see some quieter conditions. But I also want to update you on Ian's forecast as well because we could see some changes to our eight day uh, because of Ian's path. So uh, if you have any questions or anything along the way, feel free to drop a comment. I'll try to keep up with you as we go along here throughout this video. All right, here is Ian's current status. We got an update at eight o'clock and still category three hurricane, which is insane because it has already moved on shore, but still continuing to hold some of those conditions along with it. Wind speeds at 115 miles per hour, wind gusts at 180 and check out how it's moving northeast at 100 or sorry, northeast at eight miles per hour. So moving very slow. So right here is where we can see that uh, speed that it's moving and it is continuing just to crawl. And you can also see those winds kind of moving around in this counterclockwise rotation. As these winds continue to do so, they are just pushing that water on shore. We did see a uh, wave height peak at seven o'clock, high tide uh, at seven o'clock this evening. Uh, low tide won't be until a few hours uh, after that. So they're still continuing to see that high water. So all of our thoughts and our prayers are with all the folks down there in Southwest Florida and really uh, m most of Florida as they continue to deal with this system. Here's the latest cone that we got um, as we continue throughout the next 24 hours. This is expected to still weaken again very slowly uh, and then it could move out into the Atlantic and make another fall just south of Charleston as a tropical storm before the weekend and then is expected to move north uh, into parts of the Tennessee and Ohio Valley. So we are seeing the system continue to bring some trouble as it moves up to the north. Hey everybody, thanks for joining us and yes, prayers for all of them down there. Actually, I, I have some family in the region. I wanted to show you a couple pictures that they s were able to send me before losing communication with them. So this is in the Bonita Springs area, uh, right along the beach, south of Fort Myers, north of Naples. And uh, the area that you're seeing here with the trees, that used to be all grass. It used to be a courtyard out there. So just a grassy area. There used to be a pool out to your left. Uh, let me, there you go. There used to be a pool right here and you can see that it's completely covered in water. Um, even making it up into uh, parts of the bottom floor up to the window here. Um, this is a garage down here, family's home. Uh, and you can see even right here up to halfway of the doorway of that uh, bottom floor. So um, that was an image right around noon that they sent me. So that water has gotten even higher. Here's another image that was sent a little later on in the afternoon. As you can see, uh, this is uh, a doorway right here. That water is already making it up close to the doorknob, um, already pushing up to the, uh, not balcony, but uh, to the gate right here that you're seeing. So you can see that water continues to filter into the region. A few wind gusts that we've seen out of there today, and these are definitely so impactful. Cape Coral around 109 miles per hour, Naples, a uh, wind gust of 101, and then Punta Gorda wind gust reported of 123 miles per hour in Captiva 126. So not only have they seen horrific storm surge, but also gusty conditions uh, as well as uh, that added rainfall that will continue. Some places getting another five inches of rain as that system continues to move off. So yes, uh, thinking of all of them down there. So here up here, uh, actually going to shift our radar down a little bit because we can kind of give you the latest on where that eye is. And thankfully, we're seeing this eye uh, kind of fall apart here. 
Let me uh, bring the pointer back out. Right here near Okeechobee, we are seeing some of that eye wall start to fall apart. So really just seeing it weaken. Hopefully the system will continue to do that. Uh, but north of Sebring, uh, Port Charlotte, folks within this region, uh, just to the uh, east of Sarasota. Still, this is the worst of the we weather, this terrible rainfall, um, terrible wind speeds as well. If we kind of zoom in, uh, you can see this is a bit closer towards the Arcadia area. So on that outer rain band, just continuing to see that terrible, terrible weather. All right, we'll bring you up a little bit closer to our way. And of course, we'll have another update coming up at 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll get another position update with the latest and a new cone as well, uh, closer towards 11. So we'll continue to keep you updated. We've been seeing a few showers uh, here, as you can see, uh, moving in from the lake, lake shore and pushing off to the south. But those are now way scattered and becoming few and far between as we are now going to see a drying trend. I'm sure a lot of people excited after some gloomy and damp uh, few days. Tomorrow we're going to make it into the upper 50s, so still going to be cool out there. Uh, any cool fall lovers out there? I love fall. Uh, the weather was a little bit cool for me today. I wish the sunshine would definitely help. And we are going to see some throughout the day tomorrow, wind still from the north, so watching out for that. Hour by hour, we'll start to quiet things down tonight into tomorrow morning. Our models are popping up a shower or two in the morning, but I think a lot of this is expected to be cloud coverage. And then we'll continue to see some breaks throughout the day. And then see all that, that uh, high cloud cover that just slipped into our region? That is the wind shield, or excuse me, the cloud shield moving in from Ian. So uh, that is expected to move in Friday night. Still Friday night football looking really nice. We're looking at the uh, upper 50s, falling back into the mid 50s. Going to be a little bit cool out there, but at least we'll stay quiet in terms of our forecast. In terms of what Ian will do for our weather, as it continues to move up the east coast, is expected to inch a little bit closer towards Ohio by Sunday. Saturday, we'll see that cloud coverage move in, kind of those high cirrus clouds that we see. Um, and then we do have the chance for a few showers, mainly south of our region on Sunday. You'll definitely want to keep updated on this forecast as this kind of continues to change here um, within our models. So it, it'll all depend on that third landfall that Ian makes um, as it continues to move off to the north. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. Here's what it looks like in our eight day forecast. Uh, some cool fall weather here, upper 50s tomorrow, so going to be another fall day. Uh, and then heading into Friday and Saturday, Friday 65, 66 on Saturday. We'll see a few high clouds build in. Sunday chance for a few sprinkles, but I do think that'll stay south of our area, which is good news because Wooly Bear is on Sunday. Is anyone coming out to the festival? I hope so, because we'd love to see you there. And it looks like we'll stay pretty quiet as a lot of the rain will stay to our south. And then a pretty similar pattern, uh, mid 60s throughout next week with a good deal of some sunshine. Before I leave you here for the night, I'm gonna take it back uh, to the latest for some folks that were just joining us here on uh, Hurricane Ian. Uh, I know we had a couple questions here. It does seem like we just got an update in two, now a category two hurricane. Um, winds at 105, so yes, there it is, losing speed. We talked about that eye wall continuing to fall apart, and that eye wall is where so the strongest of the winds are. Um, and I know I had a few folks asking uh, about uh, that eye wall, where the worst of the weather is. So just to give you a little bit of perspective, uh, Lakeland is, let me get my pointer, Lakeland's right here, um, so they are experiencing some of those outer bands probably pretty gusty, not the worst of it. The worst of it is right around Sebring and even Arcadia. Uh, Fort Meade definitely dealing with some gustier conditions. Sarasota probably a bit windy as well. Uh, and then you're probably seeing some of the uh, storm surge, uh, not like what is being seen in Southwest Florida, but it just seemed like those winds are wrapping around a bit. Uh, Tampa, you're still seeing that uh, flow where it is bringing the winds off to the south and west, so maybe not seeing as much storm surge here. Actually, a lot of that water maybe probably pushed out of Tampa Bay um, as we're continuing to see the winds push off to the south and west, just in that direction. 
Uh, and then again, this is uh, south of Orlando. Orlando getting a lot of heavier rain here. Um, and, and in this quadrant, could see the chance for some severe weather still off to the north and east, but with uh, some inter drier interaction feeding into that quadrant of the storm, it does seem like we are seeing this storm quickly break down, which is what we want to see. I'll leave you with this last view here. We will be back on at 10 o'clock. Of course, we're always getting updated information on this system and our forecast. Uh, again, I, I want to say thoughts and prayers out to those who are in Southwest Florida, as there will definitely be some cleanup over the next few days. Uh, and we'll continue to keep you updated on ways that maybe you want to help out as well for some of our friends and family members that are down in the Florida region. Uh, you can join us at 10 o'clock tonight, or if you're looking for more information on that forecast, you can find that at fox8.com underneath our forecast discussion. Thanks for joining.